So when it comes to finding probability, there's a method we use referred to as the addition rule, which applies to certain types of probability. Specifically, it's when we're picking, looking for two or more outcomes, but it's only for a single pick. So the probability of picking one thing that meets certain criteria. So for example, problem one, who satisfies the condition of being a female or being somebody who lives in Long Beach. So if we're just picking one person, then if we pick a female living anywhere, this person would satisfy our condition because we're just going to pick one person and we're looking to see female, check in this case, and we didn't even ask where they live. Or that one person we pick, it could be a person who lives in Long Beach of any gender, and it doesn't matter what sex they are because they live in Long Beach and meet our second criteria. Or if we just pick one person, we could actually pick a female who lives in Long Beach because it satisfies both conditions. So we pick one person, but we're looking for multiple things. Consider case two down below. What if we're looking to pick somebody who lives in Long Beach or somebody who lives in Lakewood? then the one person we pick could be a person who lives in Long Beach or the one person we pick could be a person who lives in Lakewood. And for this problem, let's assume that you can't live in both places. Maybe when you were growing up, your parents had 50-50 custody and one lived in Long Beach and one lived in Lakewood. But I don't know, when they're filling out their taxes, you probably were listed in one city. So when we're picking a single event, looking to see if it satisfies more than one condition, we specifically need to define mutually exclusive. And sometimes instead of being called mutually exclusive, you'll just refer to the events as being disjoint. But the formal definition is when events cannot occur at the same time. So we just gave the example of living in Lakewood and Long Beach. We said that can't happen at the same time. Or for example, a single light bulb cannot be on and off at the same time. So those two events are mutually exclusive. So now that we understand the definition, let's go ahead and look at these two cases below. Case 4A, if you toss a die, remember singular for a dice and you get a three or the event of getting an odd. So is getting a three or getting an odd two mutually exclusive events? No, because we're looking to see if you get a three, that's one specific outcome, or we're looking to see if you get an odd, which is one, three, and five. Three showed up in both of these cases, so therefore those two cases, the events, are not mutually exclusive. In part B, now it reads picking a month that begins with F and picking a month that has 31 days, and that should probably say or picking a month that has 31 days. But either way, these are the two events we're looking at. Can they ever happen at the same time? If yes, they're not mutually exclusive. But since these cannot happen at the same time, yes, these two events are mutually exclusive. Did I say that last one right? But what happens, the only month that begins with F is February, and that's only gonna have 28, sometimes 29 days, but never 31 days. So the two events are mutually exclusive.